Jim and I have uh, been teaching for a few years uh, uh, aspects of parallel programming, specifically for the Intel Xeon Phi uh, coprocessor. And uh, we finally got our book out uh, earlier this year, <laughs> right. which was a great relief. And uh, now we kind of uh, go around and uh, use the material we created for that book to, uh, to teach a class. Yeah, uh, we uh, had, had a great uh, session yesterday. Again, introducing uh, what I view as the highest end computational product that, that Intel has uh, put together, uh, the Intel Xeon Phi coprocessor. It has uh, many cores, uh, over uh, over 60 in, in some of the uh, instantiations of the uh, device, and um, you know we were uh, introducing that to uh, to the audience, and uh, I think they accepted it pretty uh, pretty well. Uh, got an understanding uh, of uh, this device with all these cores, uh, as James said, uh, highly parallel uh, programming oriented device, and to take advantage of all its capability, uh, you know, people need to move towards parallel. Program. Yeah, and I think I think uh, Jim did a great job logging in and and uh, doing a live demo uh, with your your uh, stencil code, um, and uh, I think one of the fun things was having two screens side by side, one where you were compiling the exact program on a Xeon on a on a CPU, and another one uh, compiling for the Xeon Phi and running them and. Uh, you know, the Xeon Phi, the code didn't start off very parallel, so the Xeon Phi looked terrible, because it's a parallel device. Right. And, uh, but as uh, you added parallelism, you showed that the program kept getting better in both places, which is one of our key uh, advantages uh, and things that we teach is, hey, the programming techniques we're talking about are, are just standard parallelism programming techniques, worrying about the scaling against cores, the vectorization, and I think your uh, demo went over very well that way, just recompile, make a little adjustment, recompile, and gets faster on both, but the Xeon Phi really took off when the program became uh, highly parallel. Right, yeah, we started, uh, on, on the Xeon Phi side, side at least, we, uh, we, we, we started, and it, it took uh, five minutes to run the program by the end uh, of just a few changes, at the end of, what, 20 minutes, uh, of yeah. uh, explaining uh, so, some of the really simple techniques to get going, it, it, it ran in, in just under a second. So we had a 300x uh, improvement by really leveraging the parallelism that the, yeah. that the device Of course, provided. that was the fun about having a condensed class, having a class that we can only teach for less than an hour. It's, oh, what are we gonna do for five minutes? Well, so we rearranged our slides so that we could kick that off and then come back to it five minutes later. It was sort of like, uh, 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 not quite a Julia Childs because we didn't just fake it. It's actually com uh, ran for five minutes and we came back to it. Yeah, yeah, that was a, <laughs> that was a challenge because of because of that uh, because of that uh, time. It was it was uh, it, it, we we did um, at one point um, sort of not indicate to the audience that we were doing that, but we we did get it started as part of the the learning right. process to just get a concept of where where the product was. But that yeah, that was that was fun. We had a. Uh, actually, it was just the day before that we figured out we had to do it that right. way. Right. Um, and and uh, so, you two, know. Two lines of code change and a little explanation and down to yeah. 0.99 seconds, yeah, right? Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I think that was uh, well received and, and, and the goal. And I think the other interesting thing about that is um, uh, when James and I, you know, we, we spent a fair amount of time working on, on this book, the, the Intel Xeon Phi coprocessor, high performance programming, very short. <laughs> a name for a plug. Um, we uh, interestingly we we decided that um, a combination of a little bit of explanation and diving and in, uh, diving into the um, code was a, a better way to kind of explain and, and teach it. And um, even though I don't, we didn't nat we didn't discuss it directly, that's exactly what we did in this in this course because we keep coming Just back to that's dive the in. best way to get people to dive <clears> in. Just and pull up the code and start working on it. So, yeah. and we've posted all the code from the book and all the figures uh, in high resolution so people can use them uh, themselves if they want to teach or they want to look at the code. And it's on uh, lotsofcores.com. L O T S, O F C O R E S. Yeah. Lots of course. <laughs> lots, lots of course. Um, yeah. You know, it's, that's a, a fun question. I, I, I tend to segregate um, how to answer the question into two parts. Um, one is if you've got an existing program and you're looking to add parallelism, uh, I think we, we know a bunch of techniques we did in the book. The, the other one, though, is, is if you're just thinking, gee, what could I code in parallel? I, really encourage people to read up and understand 
um, algorithms that are known to work very well in parallel, things like stencils or map or map reduce. And uh, you know, I've got a book I worked on with some other authors called Structured Parallel Programming that, that takes that approach. If you just want to think about parallel programming and really start to grasp it, um, it's like regular programming. Knowing what a stack, a list, a queue is helps you with a vocabulary and helps navigate you towards the best methods. And parallel programming is like that too, uh, and m algorithms. But Jim, you you and have a lot of experience. I do too with yeah. the the other problem, which is, hey, I've already got code. What do I do? And yeah. that, and that becomes OpenMP, MPI, TBB. Uh, yeah, which we we do. Uh, that's really uh, what um, we ended up focusing on in the in the, uh, our book was this notion that um, you know people pretty much have code ideas of how to write the code uh, have been taught uh, for many many years more more serial uses and sort of adding uh, the key steps uh, of uh, of data parallelism and um, and uh, you know task parallelism. Uh, spreading it across the cores and then taking advantage of some of the, the lower level power. So to drive uh, home the, the to yeah. drive home the two tips, what uh, the two things you did to the stencil code yesterday? You just mentioned them, but what are they? Uh, yeah, exactly. So uh, this this uh, code we ran through uh, started out uh, uh, being really written like uh, any legacy uh, code would be written, how you would think about it, and uh, we simply. Um, uh, uh, provided, uh, look at the code, analyzed some of the tools, uh, give you output of whether it's the code's been vectorized, uh, what kind of optimization did the compiler give you automatically. In the case of our code, and we sort of contrived this, uh, we said, well, you have to do a little bit, give the, give the compiler a hint based on how you wrote the code. So uh, we uh, hint, it, uh, hint it to the compiler, uh, basically two words is actually all we, all we added a, a directive. Uh, a, a pragma into the code. It was a C code uh, based thing, and um, and we got it to vectorize, and we showed the audience how how it vectorized. And pragma then finally, IV depth, yeah, yeah. Pra pragma IV depth. Uh, in in that case, we could uh, we also suggested you could use pragma simd if you were uh, really adventurous, um, and uh, and then we simply added another line of code, uh, and this is the one that gave us a, a huge boost. Uh, to scale the code uh, using task parallelism, and we focused on uh, OpenMP, which is a, a well-known standard, plenty of resources to do it. We don't really teach OpenMP in the book, but we give the basics of it so that, that people can understand how to uh, take advantage of all those cores and all those threads that uh, actually both uh, Xeon, uh, Xeon processors right. and, and way, way more Xeon 5 processors, up to 244 threads, taking advantage of that. Uh, and giving them th those basic things, and then you can dive into all the details of, of OpenMP uh, with the tons of resources online right. since it's, a, it's up to OpenMP 4.0, so it's a very mature uh, parallelism. Uh, so the bottom line is the two, the two tips, the two things you were looking for are, um, is there a concentrated part of the algorithm that's doing, can, doing a lot of data processing? Um, and if so, then you want the core of that to vectorize. And you also yeah. want around that you want to divide the data up um, to run a multiple core scale. So this is this was chapter three of our book, this example, yeah. and uh, you just look for those two. If you can look for how to get vectorization in the innermost part of your algorithm and some parallelization further out, uh, you can take advantage of the two forms of parallelism in modern devices: the the data parallel uh, SIMD instructions and the parallelism of uh, cores. Yeah, know your hotspots, know where, where the where the heavy compute is, and then you can focus on parallelism there.